In this video series, we'll be doing a 100% walkthrough for Neo 2. I'll be covering all Kodama locations, all Hot Spring locations, all mission based achievements. For example, you can do a particular thing on a specific mission to get an achievement. We're playing this on PC with the Xbox One controller plugged into the PC. This will cover the base game of Neo 2, and I might do the DLC at a later date. We'll be using a ninja build with ninjutsu. I'll also be giving hints, tips, and combat tactics along the way. My name is Azavar or Azza, now let's get into the video. Okay, so this area is all about basic controls, basic movements, stuff like that. If you look in the top right corner of the screen, you'll see a compass, and the objective is up ahead, shown on the compass. Uh, you can peer into this water here if you want to change your character's appearance. Uh, the choice is yours. We're going to head forward. This bit is all about weapon selection and guardian spirit selection. Uh, the main stat that we're going to be using for our ninja is dexterity, uh, which means that we use the Kusuragami weapon, which is this one. Uh, this just shows us you can do X for quick attack, uh, Y for strong attack. And then we're going to pick up the switch glaive here for plus one magic. We're not actually going to be using the switch glaive, but we will be using magic in our build a little bit later. Uh, so we might as well pick this up for the plus one magic. And this just shows us you can hold down RB and press down on the D-pad to switch between weapon one and weapon two. Uh, next, we'll move on to the guardian spirit selection. So there's three main types of guardian spirit. You've got the brute, you've got the feral, and you've got the phantom. Uh, the main one that we'll be using in the build a little bit later is phantom, but we won't switch to phantom until a few missions in. So for now, to get things started, we're gonna use Brute, which is this one here. And they all look a bit different. They've got different uh, skills and stuff like that. So if you press uh, B and Y together, it will show you uh, your spirit's skill. Is that one with this yokai. Then you can um, hold down RB and then B to end yokai shift, like so. So that is all that stuff. It is worth mentioning that you don't have to use a ninja build if you don't want to, and you can use whatever guardian spirit that you want to. Uh, feel free to choose how you see fit. Obviously, for this particular walkthrough, I'm going to be rocking the ninja build, and later on down the line, we're going to be rocking the phantom uh, guardian spirit. Uh, next, just want to point out the three bars at the top of the screen. So we've got the blue bar, which is health, the green bar, which is key, also known as stamina, and the purple bar, which is anima, also known as magic. And just to the right of that, you'll see some numbers. Those numbers are not on by default, so we're going to pop those on. I usually find it a bit easier with those numbers on, so go to system, and then basic game settings, go across one. And then we've got uh, these options here where it says display values on the life gauge. Uh, flick all those on, so life gauge on, uh, key gauge, anima gauge, and Rita gauge. Uh, pop all those on. And then on this page here, I've also got this one set to on, which is automatically use acquired locks of hair. Uh, so you'll pick up locks of hair as we play through. Uh, those will give you skill points relevant to the hair. Uh, if you don't have that on, you will have to manually go into the inventory and use the hair every single time you pick one up. So I find it easier to whack that on. Uh, one more setting that I would change is in the menu settings. So just one down from the top there. There's a setting here which is called number of item shortcut sets. Uh, the default is two. I go for three for this particular build that we'll be using. Uh, you can have four sets as well if you want to. Choice is yours, but we're going to set that to three. And that's how you would do that. And uh, what that means is if you look down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you hold down RB and then press left or right on your D-pad. It kind of like flicks through those shortcut sets. You'll see they're slightly different color coded there for set one, two and three. Um, so that is how you would do that. Other than that, we are going to push forward. Let's leave this place. Although it's got my favorite music in the entire game, that area. I'm going to skip through some of these cutscenes, and this will take us to the, um, the world map where you can select your missions, you can visit the dojo and stuff like that. So your missions are these icons like this one. Um, this is where you can do stuff like go to the shrine, uh, blacksmith and dojo. 
we'll cover that uh, a little bit later. There are some things on the map, sometimes you can find hidden items and stuff, so if you move around, uh, you'll see that your cursor goes red at certain places on the map. You can then press that, uh, press A, that'll give you a hidden item. Uh, there is an achievement for getting a bunch of those, so feel free to uh, sort of search around the map and look for it going red and then press A to claim the secret item. Uh, for now we are going to go on the main mission, so this is the first mission which is the Village of Cursed Blossoms. Let's head on in there. And the first thing that we'll see in this stage is a shrine. So shrines basically act like bonfires do in Dark Souls. Pick up this item here which is a spirit stone. Uh, this is a shrine. So B to pray at the shrine. And uh, what I'm going to point out is in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see where it says 375. It's kind of got like a, a golden glow. Uh, that is your Amrita, which is basically your experience points. You could also go into your items and use that small spirit stone that we picked up. And those give you a bit more Amrita as well, which is your experience points. Uh, if it's got uh, gold, like glowing gold like that. But basically it means that you can uh, afford a level up. You would level up at the shrine. So this first one, you'll see there's a yellow exclamation mark. You can press that and then pop a point into one of your stats. So for this particular walkthrough and this build, the main stats we'll be focusing on are dexterity, magic and skill. First of all, dexterity will be a priority. And then we need to put some points into skill and magic a little bit later. Uh, so for now, I'll just pop the point into Dexterity. Pump that up to 7. Uh, because we are playing the complete edition of Neo 2, we also have access to some DLC stuff. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't have access to this DLC stuff, don't worry too much. Um, I'm just going to go over here and press Boons. Press on this section here on the Shrine. This will give us a bunch of items and stuff to get things going. Uh, like I say, don't worry if you don't have the complete edition, don't... 100% need that. I'm basically using that for a Kodama sensor, which I'll show you now. So basically I'm going to head over to Equipment, and then go to Accessories. We're going to equip the Kodama sensor and the Sudama. Uh, basically how that works is, if you look in the middle, it's got special effects, and you can press Start on your controller for some extra info. Uh, basically with the Kodama accessory, there's something there called a Kodama sensor. Uh, it shows the location of nearby Kodama which are the things that we're going to be collecting on uh, most of the stages. Uh, obviously it's got other things on it as well, like increases the amount of health restored by elixirs. So feel free to press start and look through those um, special effects and stuff on your on your gear and your accessories. We also got some um, armor, so I'm going to pop some of that on. Again, don't, don't worry too much if you don't have this armor, it's all good. Just going to pop a few of those on. I'm not going to put too much on because it will put our equipment weight a bit too high. Um, I don't like it to be too high because I'm too slow and sluggish. So if you look at the top of the screen, it's got um, the equipment weight and it will show you like what it will be put up to and stuff and what it will change to. Um, so for now, that'll do. So I don't want to put it too high. I think we also got a Kasurigami from that DLC. So let's pop that on. So I want the Kasurigami in the first slot. It doesn't really matter what you have in the second slot to be fair because I'm not really going to be using um, a second weapon. So that will do. I'll pop that on. Uh, next I'm just going to give you a bit of information about the stances. So if you look in the bottom right hand corner you've got um, an icon down there about your stances. So if you whip out the uh, Kasurigami, that's in high stance. I'm holding down RB, pressing Y for high stance. Hold down RB and X for mid stance. Hold down RB and then A for low stance. You can also press B to put the weapon away. Uh, so different stances may come in useful for different situations depending on what you are fighting and stuff. Uh, we'll cover the stances a little bit in a bit more detail a little bit later. Uh, but for now we can grab these items and push on forward. Uh, I think this enemy will actually see us, but you can technically sneak by pushing the left analog stick in like very, very lightly. And it kind of walks slowly like that, which actually masks your footsteps. 
Uh, later on you can get like backstabs and stuff from behind, but for now we don't really have that, so... We'll just go ahead and... Whack him with a combo. Uh, you'll see that he's out of key here, so he's got two bars. He's got a health bar and a key bar. He's about to restore his key. Um, so when they are out of key, it makes them very, very, very vulnerable. So you can deliver a critical strike if they're out of key. And you'll, you'll generally do a lot more damage to enemies and stuff um, if, the, if the key bar is depleted. Uh, for now, we'll just finish this guy off. That is that. Just going to pick up a couple of items. Uh, so we've got an enemy up ahead here. Uh, I think the dev intention here is to not fight this enemy and just kind of show you how tough some of the enemies can be. Um, we will take a stab at uh, fighting him though. Drops a key item, which you can use as a shortcut through the stage. Although technically we won't really be using that because we're going to be getting uh, running around and getting all the kadamas and stuff. So uh, for now, I'm just going to pick up these items around the back. Uh, we'll fight that guy in just a second. Enemy here. So once again, you can sneak if you want to. Uh, I'll try and show you the critical strike. So if we do one combo, it should deplete his key bar. Then we can deliver a critical strike. And finish him off. That just tells us a little bit about LB and uh, and dodge there. So uh, LB is guard. And you can hold down LB and do like little dodges to the side. So we'll be using that in just a second. Basically we'll, what we'll do is uh, we'll try fighting this enemy in just a second. And one of the tactics that I'm going to be doing is holding down LB um, for a split second before dodging. So he's going to whack down his club and instead of just pressing A to dodge it usually works out better to press LB first and then press A and still hold LB because you can still uh, dodge whilst holding the LB and sometimes the LB guard will save you getting hit before you roll and also at the end of a roll as well so it usually comes in quite useful uh, we can get one more level up here, so we're going to press level up, put one more into decks, and once again, just like bonfires and stuff in Dark Souls, it will respawn the enemies, so that one enemy that we fought just over there will be respawned. I'll try and show you, basically you hold LB, and then uh, watch out for that, because it will paralyze you, that um, purple stuff. You're holding down LB, and then you kind of like dodge... Watch out for that, that'll be a grab. Uh, so yeah, if you see that kind of like... Grey-ish animation that came from his uh, hands, it means he's going to try for a grab. And they do quite a lot of damage uh, if they do grab you. Uh, there is your first Kadama here. So if you look in the compass, the top right corner, you'll see uh, the green one is, is the Kadama, because we've got Kadama sensor on. And you can see the red one is like a... It's kind of like a boss or a mini boss type icon. We get this first Kadama. There's quite a lot of information to uh, to give with Neo too, so it's uh, there's quite a lot of layers of complexity with this game, uh, which I really enjoy actually. Uh, so for this boss, let's uh, get ready for this, and we'll we'll give it a go. We're going to be using high stance. And we're going to be using that technique that I just mentioned about the sort of LB and and roll. There's a burst counter. I'll talk about that in just one second. So if you see that red glow, it means the enemy is going to do a, a very powerful attack. And you can 
do a burst counter to counter those. Okay, I forgot he's got the uh, ram attack actually. Uh, so to, the, to do the uh, burst counter, basically I'm pressing uh, right trigger and B. Give a bit more information on that in just a second. Managed to get a critical strike there. Almost got him. I think he does that twice. There we go. So that is the key item that we grabbed for the uh, for this uh, gate over here. So there's a couple of bits and bobs that happened in that fight, and uh, basically the burst counter. So if you see the enemy glow red, uh, it means they'll do. Um, a powerful attack. It's kind of like Sekiro's Mikiri counter and uh, perilous system. So you hold down right trigger, which you'll see those horns appear on my character's head. That means that you can do a yokai ability whilst holding down the right trigger. And then B, uh, so right trigger and then B is the uh, is the burst counter. It also costs a little bit of magic. You'll see the purple bar, uh, the anima bar will go down very, very slightly. Uh, when you use a burst counter. So with this brute form, uh, basically this is generally, in my opinion, the easiest one to do a burst counter with, the, the brute guardian spirit. Um, so if you see the enemy glow red, you can pretty much press uh, right trigger and then B. And as long as it connects with the enemy uh, fast enough, it will... Um, counter their red move but other guardian spirits are a little bit trickier so you would have to time the other ones perfectly so that the enemy's attack connects with you at precisely as you are doing your burst counter whereas the brute one you don't have to time it perfectly you can just literally press it and as long as it will uh, as long as it connects with the enemy uh, before they get their attack off then it will it will work uh, we can get another level up so i'm just going to pop one into decks again here or two into decks and um because we've collected one of those kadamas you can also go here and receive kadama blessing uh, so we'll put that on for now uh, increases elixir drop rate by five percent so on this stage you can see in the bottom right hand corner we've got one out of seven kadamas so we've got some more to collect so let's push on That's quite a lot of information to uh, to go over with this game, like I say. Uh, some of that will be covered in just a second, so basically it's going to give us some tutorial stuff as we uh, proceed through here. We can go through that gate that we just opened, but for now uh, we're just going to go the intended way. It gives us all the tool tips and stuff. That talks about the stance changes there, R, B, X, Y and A. Change of stance. I'm also doing something called a key pulse. Uh, so after I do an attack or after I do a, a combo, you'll see like a blue glow. Uh, that was well timed because it's just talking about it right now. Um, so you'll see the blue glow. So you do an attack or a combo and then afterwards you can press RB and it kind of helps restore your key gauge a little bit faster. I'm basically just pressing RB there. If you do it a little bit too soon, um, you won't get the 
big glow version of it. It's usually about half a second or so after you stop attacking. It helps uh, restore that key gauge a little bit faster. So I would recommend trying to do that if you can do. But also just bear in mind that if an enemy is, you know, trying to destroy your life, just keep that in mind. You might not have time to wait for the uh, proper key pulse. If you're in the middle of combat. Okay, so that is that. Uh, you'll notice, I think it's going to talk about it in a second on the tutorial actually, so maybe I'll give that a second, but it's going to talk about um, uh, like yokai realm pools on the floor. I'm just going to grab this chest here. This is a loot chest or treasure chest. If you see a that kind of thing in front of us, the uh, sort of grey, uh, darkish realm, it means there's yokai that's... Uh, lying in wait and is about to attack us. Uh, so as we approach that, a yokai will appear. Uh, you'll notice that when we are fighting this yokai, it might be like greyish pools on the floor and you can do a key pulse to sort of delete the yokai pool or the dark realm pool off of the floor. Um, ideally you want to be deleting those dark realm pools because when you are in the dark realm or in a dark realm pool, uh, your character will be weaker, and yokai will be stronger. Um, so obviously you don't want them to be stronger, and you don't want to be weaker. So let's uh, put that in action. You also break the horn of the enemy. You'll notice that I've broken the horn off the of his head. That's a pool just underneath us there, but I just dispelled it with a, uh, a key pulse. So ideally you want to be key ports in those away if possible. I dropped a soul core, so that enemy that we just killed was a uh, Enki. Let's drop to Enki soul core. Uh, we'll move on to soul cores a little bit later. But essentially, that picking that soul call up, you'll notice that it also restored our magic bar to full. Uh, so we've now got 10 out of 10 on the uh, on the anima or the magic, which is good. Uh, once again, you can sneak if you want to. If you can, if you if you want to sneak up and get your attacks in, uh, you know, get things going. Uh, feel free to do that. So that is that. You'll notice the Kadama. So this is the second Kadama of the stage. See the green thing on our compass. Uh, so let's grab that. That's two so far. We can head on back around. Uh, a lot of this stage is, is kind of extended tutorial really. There's a lot of uh, mechanics and stuff to take in with this game. So try and cover as many as we can do in this video. I'm just doing a standard combo to uh, basically knock these guys down and then just using their strong attack. So you press the strong attack. Um, if you can see that red marker, that will allow you to do critical strike. So strong attack for critical strike. I'm going to pick up this item. And then this bit, uh, I think it teaches us about like drop downs. So basically you can just fall off and attack from above like that to do massive damage. Uh, there's a couple of different enemies here. This guy is quite strong with the axe. Um, this one has a spear. So what we'll try and do, I think we'll try and take out the spear guy first. And then focus on axe guy. The axe guy hits like an absolute truck, so just be careful. Critical strike there because he was out of key. Go 
Okay, that takes care of him. Just be careful of, the, of that uh, guy because he can pretty much uh, destroy your life with like a couple of hits and stuff. So. Getting my key ports recovery in there after every uh, combo, if we can do. Usually good to kind of get into the habit of doing that key ports because uh, you will need to use it uh, a lot really throughout the game. Uh, so we've got a shrine here. Press on that. Get a level up. So I'm going to pop a few more into decks. 11 decks so far. There we go. Now that'll do for now. We can move on forward. The intended way is over here. This is locked at the minute, so we have to kind of like go around this village and open these doors from the other side. Get the shortcut. He spotted us. Yeah, so just a strong attack there to get the grapple. Uh, sometimes, if there's quite a lot of enemies, it might be worth changing stance with the Kasuragami. So the mid stance has got a bit more range to it. You'll see that it's like uh, wider on its attack, so it's got more of a range. And then the high attack, the high stance has not got as much range. So sometimes if we're fighting multiple enemies like these few down here, it might be worth popping over to mid stance instead. Uh, although, I think what we can do is be a bit cheeky here, and uh, if memory serves, this is the gates, by the way, that we opened earlier uh, from that key item from that uh, boss enemy that we got. I think there's some items knocking about here, so we'll grab those. There's one there. You can kick down these ladders for a shortcut. If you want to grab that, that leads back to the beginning. Uh, there's a couple of bits and bobs you can do here. We can approach this area by being a little bit more stealthy. And heading up the top here. Watch out for these range guys. Ideally, I, want, I don't want to push this guy off the edge, ideally. Just uh, keep him up here, because I wanted to get his loot and stuff. Thought he might drop some arrows, but he actually doesn't, so don't worry about that. Uh, the main thing we got here was a bow, so we're going to go to equipment and range weapons longbow. And then hold down left trigger to whip out the longbow. We've got three arrows. Uh, I thought that guy would drop a few more arrows for us, actually, but he hasn't, but no worries, that's fine. Uh, and basically, there's a mechanic with the with the range weapons, like the rifle and the bow and arrow, where you can pretty much just one-shot enemies. Um, that's not one-shot him, but that's fine. I'm going to try and get some on here. I don't think the, the damage from the bow is high enough at the minute to one-shot them. Oh, it is for that guy. Just makes things a little bit easier, so you, instead of going down there and like manually fighting every single enemy, uh, you can pretty much just uh, pop them in the head with this. If you can get a good shot, which apparently I can't get a good shot on this guy. Now I'll have to drop down and fight him, that's fine. Uh, but you can just headshot that guy there to make it a little bit easier. So instead of taking two enemies on at the same time, it makes your life easier by just uh, fighting one instead. Okay, so let's uh, explore this village. Uh, yeah, so like I say, if you can get a headshot on an enemy, definitely go for it. It makes life a lot easier if you can just pop one off before you actually start engaging in combat with the rest of them. But uh, Kadama here, so I believe that's the third. Four more arrows there as well, so we could actually go back up the top uh, and attack from the rooftops and stuff. Uh, with a bow and arrow, but just explore down here. There's a chest. We've got some more arrows in that as well.
We're going to go through these buildings and just make sure we looted everything basically before we push forward. Can uh, run through those boxes there. Uh, you'll see that it, it's got like a, an extra red dot in the middle. So if you aim at his back, uh, the red dot in the middle is not uh, lit up. But then if you point up a little bit more and aim at the head, you'll see the red dot in the middle. That's basically the one you want to be seeing before you let the arrow go. Just pop them in the head and then uh, that's that. Okay, so that is uh, that section of the village. Let's push on to the next bit. I think there's some stuff up on the rooftops as well that we could uh, go back and grab. I think this guy's got a helmet on, so usually if the enemy's got a helmet on, it takes two shots to uh, kill them. The first one will knock the helmet off. Like that. And then he'll come at us. He can keep on shooting. He's got quite a lot of health, so he's not died in, in one hit, but you could have run up there and uh, got a critical strike as he's like falling to the floor. But I've just waited for him to stand up again and popped him, a, popped him again in the head with the uh, bow and arrow, so that is uh, a way to approach that. Now, this game's really good in the sense that, like, there's so many different builds that you can use, and there's so many different ways that you can uh, play through the game, which is awesome. Um, like a full-on ranged build is, is a lot of fun as well. I don't think there's too much more up on the rooftops, if memory serves. I think we've got most of the uh, shenanigans up here, so... Push it on forward, might be able to kick that down if you want a shortcut. I think there's a Kadama coming up quite soon as well, and some uh, a yokai that we've got to fight. So just a bit of information about uh, these. We've got uh, these blue graves, and we've also got the red graves. Uh, basically, the blue ones are uh, sort of like AI-controlled allies that will will help you out, and they require cups to summon them. Uh, so you'll see down there it says uh, cups required two, uh, three owned, so you can. Use those cups to get an AI controlled ally to uh, follow you around and help you out in combat and stuff. They are insanely useful and uh, very, very helpful. So definitely pop those uh, if you want some extra help. I think on this stage, because this one is always there as far as memory serves, I think that is um, like a, an NPC as such but you can actually place an item down i think it's called a righteous jasper and it kind of like puts a, a, a sort of like a clone of yourself on the floor and then people can summon like an ai controlled version of you uh, to help fight by their side but uh, we'll cover that a little bit later when we get some righteous jasper and stuff uh, there is a kadama quite close you can see they do quite a good job of hiding these so if you look on the compass uh, you'll see the green icon, you can just sort of roll into those to smash the things and then get the Kadama. That is that. Uh, these red graves are sort of like a, a PvP challenge as such, so it's usually if a player has died in a certain place, uh, for example this one, it also shows you how they died. Uh, if you look there it says drowned. Uh, so you can hold down B to fight the Revenant there. Uh, that is that. I'm going to check some shortcuts real quick. I think I'm going to pop on a sacred water in case we do need it. We've got quite a few sacred waters um, from this uh, stage so far. So sacred water, basically what that will do is uh, in uh, regen our key gauge or stamina gauge like insanely fast. So if we're finding ourselves uh, struggling with the uh, key recovery and stuff, then it's probably a good idea to pop on the sacred water to help us through that. I've got another loot chest there, so let's grab that. 
But we can also level up, so we should do that at some point soon. I'm right, just going to check up here. I don't think there's too much knocking about up here, but it's worth a look. Might be some loot chests and such. Look around. I think it's just that guy basically that we just killed. Oh, some stuff there as well. That's pretty much that. Uh, so, Yokai up ahead. We got five elixirs and a sacred water. So it might actually pop. Actually, broke this enemy's horn. going to pop a sacred water for this guy, I think. Just using the standard combo there, really, for this guy at the minute. Usually if he kind of gets ready like that, it means he's going to do a, um, looks like a four attack combo. Four chain attack combo. Uh, so you just kind of ready up and uh, try and get behind him for that four attack combo and then deliver your attacks from behind. Uh, so that is that area. And we can you see on the compass we've got a green dot, so we've got a hidden Kadama uh, behind here. So we're going to grab that one. Uh, that is that, and then we can get the shortcut. We're kind of coming to the end of this stage soonish. That's a shortcut there, and we can grab the shrine, which I think we should do. Use any uh, spirit stones that you might have. That should do for now. Uh, we can also learn skills, so got this uh, skill menu here and obviously it glows up if you've got a, uh, a skill point that you can spend as such so what I will do uh, change into another stance on a successful key pulse increases the amount of key recovered uh, dodging at perfect time uh, will now automatically trigger a key pulse so we'll get a few of these and get some of these popping off I'm going to go for the high stance version because that's the one that I mostly use. And then we'll look at the Kasuragami. I think the skill that I usually aim for first of all is uh, this one here, the Renegade Dragon, which is a really cool skill. I use it quite often. Uh, so I'm going to head in that direction, or at least what I've done there is basically pushed in the right um, analog stick, to sort of like hi highlight a, a node, so I remember where I'm going with that. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to pop those on a couple of couple of things like that. Doesn't really matter too much at this point. Uh, we can also level up, so we might as well pop that. What I'll do is we will need to use a little bit of skill, uh, so I'm going to put a point into skill there as well. Uh, skill will activate certain special effects in the armor that we're going to be wearing, so we do need to have a little bit of skill as well. I'm uh, just going to double check the Kadamas. Can't remember exactly how many we've got so. Far. Uh, we have uh, 5 out of 7 so we just need a few more uh, what I'm going to do is switch this to the top one uh, increases the amount of Amrita acquired by 5% uh, and then just two more uh, Kadamas which I believe are in this direction uh, you can sneak up on this guy if you want to Uh, when we level up the ninjutsu skill tree a little bit later, you can um, get like stealth attacks and stuff from behind, which is really cool. Uh, but for now, we can't do that. There's quite a few enemies in this section here. It's usually a good idea to try and take them out with a bow and arrow if possible. Um, I think that might be all of them. 
And we can see on the compass there is a Kadama. I thought there was a third one. There we go. So that is all that. We've got a Kadama hiding away behind this. Uh, yeah. Grab that. Item up here. Uh, a Scampus here. What I might do with the Scampus is just wait a second. Scampus are really cool, really cute. Uh, basically what they do is uh, regenerate your magic bar, like when they're following you. They kind of like roll around behind you. Rolling around at the speed of sound. they got places to go. They've got to follow the rainbow. Uh, so we're going to head into the Dark Realm here, or the Yokai Realm. This is basically those yokai pools that you saw a little bit earlier. We're basically inside that realm completely at this point. So it makes us a lot weaker and makes the enemies a lot stronger in this realm, which is obviously not ideal. Uh, you also can't use the shrine here until we purify the yokai realm. So the intention here is to purify the yokai realm. I'm not sure if these get one shot. Uh, yes, they do. One didn't, but it's okay. There's one over there as well. Then pop them again with another arrow once they've fallen down, or you can just run up to them and give them a quick, uh, quick one too. So take care of those first. Uh, you can choose to use the Scampus, this yokai, uh, just up here. So what we'll do. We'll go and grab the Scampus and I'll show you that following us around. There's a yokai up ahead and this uh, it's quite difficult to fight that yokai in the actual yokai realm at this point in the game. It might be worth using a sacred water as well to uh, help recover your key. Uh, so your key recovery in the, in the dark realm or the yokai realm is, is horrible. Um, it recovers like insanely slow. Uh, so it's definitely worth popping a sacred water to help with that recovery uh, whilst you are in the dark realm. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll grab the scampus. Here we go. <laughs> and then they roll around and follow us. Uh, so you'll see the purple bar basically um, regenerates uh, faster when this is following us around. Look how slow the, the key bar recovers its it's awful in this realm. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll use a sacred water and we'll get into the action. Can sneak once again to get the fight started. Be careful of these ones because they've got like a really quick claw attack where they turn around really fast and do the claw swipe like that. We've broke the horn, we can do critical. They are very, very strong in this realm. Yes, yeah, so just be very, very careful. Okay, so we took that guy out and it purifies the realm. So it's back to normal again now, which is always good. A key item there in a shrine key. Make sure to get that. You need that to proceed. Uh, loot chest here. Uh, so that is that. I think that is everything. It also clears the compass up as well, so you'll notice that when we were in the dark realm, uh, the compass doesn't really work. You can't see things. It won't show Kadamas and stuff. Uh, but once the realm is clear again, you can now see the compass clearly. Uh, you'll notice that obviously there is a Kadama hidden behind this gate just there. And we can also pray at this shrine before the boss fight of the first stage. Now what we'll do is we'll just grab that Kadama real quick, just around the corner. Just there. So all of this mission's Kadama spirits have now been guided to the shrine. That's all Kadamas for stage one. Which is always good. And uh, then we've got a boss fight coming on up. I believe we can also use burst counters on this boss fight as well. So uh, if the boss sends us into the Dark Realm, we'll definitely be using a um, Sacred Water to help us through. Just going to check to see if we've got any spirit stones we don't. That's fine. 
Uh, Amri our Amrita gauge is gold, which means we can level up, so we might as well pop a Chica level. We're going to pop one into skill. We're going to focus on dex and skill for, for now. And then you'll notice it says 7 out of 7 Kadamas, which is always good. And we've got the top one applied. It increases the amount of Amrita by 5%. Uh, so that is that. We'll just have a look at the Kadama Bazaar, uh, which is essentially like a, a little Kadama shop. Uh, you can buy extra things like elixirs, sacred waters, in exchange for uh, rice, I believe it is. That should do for now. We'll cover that in a bit more detail uh, a little bit later on. We've got seven elixirs and we've got uh, six sacred waters, which should pull us through this fight. Uh, the boss fight is essentially the uh, the thing that the giant thing that we fought at the start, the optional fight. So B to go in. I'm going to uh, skip past the scene if there is a scene. Yeah, I'll skip past it. High stance here. Uh, usually, it's a good idea to sort of like dodge towards your left. So you're going to nip back and pop a sacred water from behind this uh, behind this thing there. We used a burst counter there. popped into the dark realm so I'm gonna use a sacred water in behind there I'm actually gonna go into our guardian spirit form there as well held down strong attack to increase the hammer's power critical strike on that and there we go, that's the uh, first stage and the first boss down. Uh, what I did there with the yokai form, basically you would press uh, Y and B uh, together on your controller to transform into your yokai form. And then when I was in the yokai form, I held down strong attack. Uh, and what that does is kind of like increase the power of your weapon. You'll notice that his hammer like went bigger than it normally is um, so if you hold down a strong attack for a few seconds it will kind of like power up your weapon in yokai form it's definitely worth uh, definitely worth doing that uh, other than that yeah just grab the loot and stuff i'm going to skip past the cutscenes, and i believe that should take us back to the world map if memory serves That kind of uh, wraps up mission one, and I know that was quite a, a long one with quite a lot of information and stuff, but like I say, this game does have a load of information, uh, which we will be going over, of course, in this 100% walkthrough. Skip past these, and that wraps up episode one. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.